there's um if you think about the the one television show that was perhaps most important i think in the 60s it was star trek and um recently i was uh, sitting with uh, a man who's about my age and i hadn't seen him in 20 years and we were actually watching star trek the next generation on television and he said you know anyone in our cohort will understand Everyone that's a little older and a little younger, they don't understand. And here's what I think he meant. Uh, it was a show for all its weaknesses and strengths that dealt with the idea that nothing was fixed. To have social relationships, to build a society, to have marital relationships. There were other planets, which meant there were other ways of doing things. And when you think about um, what the 60s, uh, the attempt to build alternative institutions to build, whether they were communes or different schools that were liberated and so forth. I think um, basic to all of that was the idea, let's assume nothing is fixed. Let's assume that we really don't know what's um, supposed to happen and that we can figure out a new way uh, to create the family, let's say. Uh, that will deal not only with a nuclear family, that we can look at those relationships in a new way, that we can look at schools in a new way and see if they have a purpose that's truly uh, liberating, that we can um, create government in a new way, that we can create politics in a new way. So very much like science fiction, I think that um, uh, what the 60s, uh, this entire idea of trying to build a new community was an attempt to turn the world upside down and say, let's look at it all from a new point of view and from a point of view that will nourish us more than these old, sodden, boring, depressing, repressive, regressive, oppressive institutions that we have around us. I went to college and in my freshman year, my two roommates were beetle maniacs. Every time they had to take an exam, they would pull out the record player right as they were about to walk to school and take that exam and they'd put on a hard day's night. And they'd sit there and listen to it three times and then they felt ready and they could take the exam. So for me at that time, I thought this was pretty strange. I thought it was pretty bizarre. I didn't like the Beatles. And it wasn't until, um, I guess a couple of years later, uh, Norwegian Wood, whatever that time when they were into a much more melodious and then of course later with Sgt. Pepper, that I became uh, converted to and I began to love them. But my first reaction was, ugh! Why did I react to them that way? Um, and why did I react to Elvis that way, which of course... Uh, I think out of uptightness, um, I remember once taking a test in which I was asked, do you like loud, vibrant drumming? And I said no, and later realized I had lied. So I think um, I was trying to be the good little girl. I think I, uh, um, I think uh, I disdained them out of some kind of, uh, I was, you know, too good for them. They were sort of, I don't know, something like that.